So Bill Maher is, uh, he's getting worse and worse as time goes by. He's shifting further to the right. And um, I'm going to show you some of his new, there's going to be two clips in one here, one from the overtime on his show and then one from his new rule segment. Um, there was a time, now you could argue I was just getting involved in politics and so I didn't know as much at the time, but there was a time I really liked Bill Maher. Um, and he was even, honestly, pains me to say this at this point, because now, you know, I disagree with the guy way more than I agree with him, but he was one of the reasons I even got involved in politics to the extent I got involved in politics. Um, I remember when I was a kid and I, and I would see his late at night, he would have politically incorrect his original show. I think it was on Comedy Central originally and then ABC and, um, and then later on, he's been on HBO for a while now, for a really long time, actually. But I liked him at one point. And, you know, before everybody jumps down my throat about that, allow me to say, it was really the stuff on the Iraq war that first got me interested in what he had to say, because he was incredibly tough on the Bush administration and really, really, really vocally anti-Iraq war. And I thought that was really cool. And I thought he was right about that stuff. So I liked him a lot. And then it has been a gradual but sure decline into just becoming, honestly, one of the hackiest pundits out there. So let's look at some of the points he made um, this past week, and then we'll discuss. The voters that Democrats need to win, moderates who have Trump fatigue, will vote against the good economy, I think, just to get back to normalcy. But they won't trade it away for left-wing extremism. You say you want a revolution? Well, you know. <laughs> you gotta get elected first. <laughs> and this election... <laughs> and this election is about two things. Fatigue and fear. We have fatigue, he has fear. Fear of socialism, fear of open borders, fear of getting rid of private health insurance, fear of higher taxes. He's running on, the communists are coming, shit yourself. <laughs> we should run on, elect me, and we can stop talking about him. All the Democrats have to do to win is to come off less crazy than Trump, and of course, they're blowing it. <laughs> Coming across as unserious people who are going to take away all your money so migrants from Honduras can go to college for free and get a major in America sucks. Isn't the Fed cutting rates now just going to make the next economic downturn worse? What's your prediction? I've been hoping for a recession. People hate me for it, but yeah, it, it would get rid bad. of Trump, so you shouldn't hate me for it. I mean, recessions are really bad. People lose their jobs. And their I phones, know. And we, and we shouldn't wish It's them. worth it. But uh... What do you even say in response to that? I mean, the whole reason I'm against Trump is because I think Trump's decisions really hurt Americans. So that's why I oppose Trump, because on policy, he's terrible, and that has negative consequences that hurts people. For Bill Maher to say something like, I'm rooting for a recession, and then when somebody says they're really terrible and people lose their jobs and, and it has a lot of negative consequences, and he's like, I don't care, it's worth it, then what, what Bill Maher is telling you there is, in no uncertain terms, he's saying, I care more about being anti-Trump than I care for the American people doing well and thriving and being happy. That's what he's telling you. And again, it's in no uncertain terms. So for me, politics is the means to an end, the end being everybody thriving and, and, and being happy and being prosperous. Like, that's what politics is. For him, he's letting you know, I prioritize playing for my team and being against the other team more than I prioritize the well-being of Americans. So, to which I would respond to Bill Maher then, why even be involved in politics? I mean, if that's, if that's as deep as your, you know, connection to politics goes, why not just only care about sports, where you can actually root for a team and be against the other team, and there's no, like, moral dimension to it? Like, here, it's almost like you're, you're announcing to the world, I'm an immoral prick. 
because I care more about getting rid of Trump than I care about the American people thriving. But Bill, the whole reason I'm against Trump is because I want the American people to thrive. What you're saying is it's okay for the American people to be in a shitty situation as long as that guy Trump is gone. See, this is what happens when you've been involved in politics for so long and you're just, at this point, you're just massively disconnected. And listen, he's really wealthy, you know, and that's not... But there were times when Bill Maher was wealthy, but he also made sense, like on the Iraq war, <laughs> back when it was Bush. But now it's just, his partisanship has basically, it overrides anything else, if that makes sense. So, it, it's this is just embarrassing to see, rooting for a recession. Now, don't get me wrong, a recession is going to happen. There's no doubt about it. It's a fact. I mean, our economy is a house of cards. But to actively wish for it to tank and being okay with harm on other people simply so you could say, I score one against Trump. I mean, that's... That's just pathetic, man. That's just pathetic. Um, now, to the other part that was in his new rule segment. He says, well, listen, Democrats need to win moderates in order to win the election, and... So they just need to come across as more sane and normal than Trump, and somehow they're failing. Bill, look at the polls, man. Look at the polls. The American people overwhelmingly want Medicare for all. They overwhelmingly want free college. They overwhelmingly want a living wage. They overwhelmingly want to end the wars. They overwhelmingly want to legalize marijuana. This idea of, like, there's liberal, there's conservative, and there's moderate, and Democrats need to win moderate, so they gotta, like, be sane and run to the middle. That's just a fundamental misunderstanding of politics. Perhaps what people want is to actually be offered something, to be offered something that makes sense, to be offered a vision to improve the country and fix our problems. And perhaps the way to improve our country and fix our problems is to unapologetically embrace a left economic vision. In order for Democrats to win, you know what they need to do? First and foremost, you gotta turn out your base. That's rule number one of politics. Rule number one, and the Republicans never violate that rule. They're always throwing red meat to their base. The Democrats are always spitting in the eye of their base. So how about, for once, we run an election where the Democrats don't spit in the eye of their base? Look at Hillary. All she did was spit in the eye of her base, and turns out she didn't win the election. So maybe the answer is to run an anti-Hillary campaign, to be unapologetically on the left. So the idea is not just get moderates. The moderates will come if you have a left populist vision. Because you're going to hold your own base with a left populist vision. You are going to get the moderates. And even you're going to get some people who were pro-Trump, but now they see the folly in their ways and they said, I thought this guy was a populist himself and was going to fight outsourcing and he didn't do it. So the way to win is basically the opposite of what Bill Maher is telling you to do. He says, oh, everybody has Trump fatigue and all they want is like a return to normalcy. So, in other words, what he's saying is, do the same thing Hillary Clinton did. Hillary's campaign was all Trump bad, Trump bad, Trump bad. I will maintain the status quo. I'll be the normal president. And what happened, Bill? He's just so disconnected. And then he even feeds into the right-wing smear and lie that Democrats are pushing for open borders. That's just factually untrue. There's not a single Democrat who's running on open borders. They're just not. The furthest anybody goes is Julian Castro, and when Julian Castro speaks about this issue, you have to listen to the specifics. What he says is, hey, I want to change border crossings from a misdemeanor, which is what they are right now, um, to a civil offense. And the only reason I'm doing that is to stop the family separations. So in other words, it's still illegal, it's just a civil offense as opposed to a misdemeanor, and I want to stop the family separations, which we all agree is a terrible thing, because we all don't like the kids in cages, or at least everybody says they don't like the kids in cages. So he's feeding into that lie, man. It, he used to actually argue, like he he would say he would he supports Bernie and he would argue for like Medicare for all, and now he's like undercutting left wing arguments with shitty points, and it's really uh, it's really embarrassing and sad to see. I mean, I guess that's what happens when <laughs> you're. You've been in your ivory tower for so long that you're just not in contact with regular people anymore. Like, he's he's just used to being in his little, you know, L.A. liberal bubble surrounded by his well-off friends and other actors and shit and comedians. And 
He's just lost touch. He's lost touch and he's becoming so much more centrist. He used to side with the left in the intra-party democratic fights. He did. I know a lot of people will be surprised to hear that. But now this is very clearly him siding with the more conservative, centrist, neoliberal Democrats in the intra-party fight. And it's sad to see, man.